Well, good evening and welcome to Goodison Park. It's Everton versus Fulham in the Premier League. My name's Rich Wolfenden and this is Everton Live. And happy Valentine's Day. Forget the bouquets of flowers, forget the chocolates. We're here for three points. Uh, Sarah Halpin, how on earth are you on this Valentine's Day? I'm very well and I really enjoyed that uh, introduction <laughs> there. We are here for three points and... Uh, just about caught our breath, I think, haven't we, Rich, after that 5-4 uh, midweek against Spurs. So hopefully oh. it'll be another win. Um, could do with maybe a little bit less drama because, yeah, I was, a, I was a bit lightheaded after that one. But we were through and that's the main thing. Well, that's it. Yeah, we've got a quarter-final with Manchester City, of course, at the end of next month. But, I mean, that game, if the ground was full of supporters, it would have been absolutely insane in this ground. Um, yeah. But watching it at home on the TV must have felt pretty crazy as well. Oh, it was brilliant. And, uh, you know, it, it, it is exactly that. It's a game that deserved fans. And we were saying, weren't we, before the game started, us and the team here, that the ground would have been falling apart. I think we'd have been rocking, uh, absolutely swinging if we'd have had fans here for what was one of the most entertaining games I've seen. Uh, it's just, it's not as fun as it, obviously, watching it on telly. We all want to be here, but uh, delighted for Bernard to score the winner and delighted that we're through to the quarterfinals. Yeah, brilliant result for Everton. Like I said, Manchester City in the quarterfinal for win that. We get a day out at Wembley, so that is something to look forward to for sure. Now, Everton Live uh, is back once more, and as always, we've got a full show for you. So here's what's to come this evening over the next hour or so. When the players arrive, we'll have footage of that. A couple of surprises in the squad today is what I've been hearing. Uh, the team news will be announced an hour before kickoff. We'll have it before anybody else. Uh, and then we'll have the highlights of that insane game against Spurs uh, from midweek. We'll then be... Uh, going over to Texas to hear from our later, uh, from the Austin supporters, um, the Austin supporters, the Evertonians from Austin uh, <laughs> later on. Uh, we'll also be hearing from Gilfie Sigurdsson as he's been talking to Everton about his career. Uh, Gabby George is back for Everton Women's, which is brilliant news to be hearing from her. And we'll also have goals from Fulham over the years. Thankfully, we have a good record against them, so there's plenty of goals to choose from. We'll be hearing from Carlo Ancelotti. And then kick off, you will have live commentary from 7 o'clock on Everton FC. Dot com. And remember, Sarah will be asking questions to our guest, Graham Stewart, later on. So get onto Twitter and use the hashtag EvertonLive and Sarah will ask those questions later on in the show. Now, uh, just a quick word tonight then. Fulham at home. We've already beaten them once this season at Craven Cottage. 3-2 um, was the scoreline then. Mm -hmm. Are you anticipating as many goals as there was in that game? Oh, well, I don't want to anticipate anything and predict. I think me and, me and Graeme Stewart had a bit of a howler at predicting one then in the last game. So, no, you know, Craven Cottage, it was a fantastic game. Uh, we were brilliant first half. I think second half, the game was Fulham's and it, it was one that was very, very relieved and, and pleased to see us get over the line in the end because they, they really give us a good go in that second half. So, um, I'd prefer if it wasn't as close as that or as <laughs> yeah. close as it was on, uh, in midweek. But, yeah, let's, let's get the three points, as you said, Rich. Yeah, well, we'll find out in a couple of hours whether we do get three points or not. I mean, they're in the rele relegation zone, so I don't want to jinx it, but... Oh, don't. And this record on, we've got going on, it just makes you nervous, doesn't it? It but really no. does. <laughs> it really does. Well, anyway, fingers crossed for that. Anyway, it's time to introduce our special guest this evening. He's becoming a little bit of a regular on Everton Live. It's Mr. Graham Stewart. So Graham Stewart joins me now. How are you doing, Graham? I'm very well, thanks. Rich, yourself? Yeah, yeah, all good. It's a little bit warmer than the other night. I wouldn't go... Actually, I wouldn't say warmer. Less cold, let's say that. It, it's the wind chill factor that's uh, <laughs> killing us a little bit here, but we're nicely wrapped up. Plenty of layers on, so yeah. I'm not fat. I've just got plenty <laughs> of layers on. Yeah, OK, we'll, we'll go with that. Uh, so um, let's just talk about Spurs the other night first. Mm. It's absolutely crazy game. We won't talk about yours and Sarah's predictions, but, you know, no. nine goals. Not been too many of them here at Goodison Park. Of play, oh, no, it, it was an amazing game. And, you know, I said it on commentary with Darren Griffiths as well. If you're a neutral watching this game, you don't want it to end. You wanted it to go to extra time. You, you, you know, you were just sat there just enjoying yourself. Me and Darren were, the heart was pulsating way too much for my liking. <laughs> but, uh, no, it was a fantastic result. Some really good performances um, on both sides as well. Uh, I think our goalkeeper deserves a huge mm. pat on the back because everybody talks about the 5-4 but it might not have ever got to extra time if it wasn't for 
for the keeper for because Olsen, you know yeah. Rob, you know Robin Olsen because you know there's no doubt about it he kept us in the game kept us in the tie in that first half an hour or so. Yeah, I mean it was an end to end game, wasn't it? Did you feel it? There was any point that we were gonna throw it all away? Do you know what? I, it can go either way, can't it? When you get to extra time, I thought we actually got stronger into into extra time, which is great credit to the energy of the players, the mindset, the desire to get over the finishing line. So. The longer the game went on, the more I was I felt a little bit more comfortable, if you see what I mean, because I yeah. thought Tottenham tired more than we did. So all the credit in the world to the to the character of the players. Yeah. And obviously in the next round we've got Manchester City in the quarter final. It's gonna be a tough old task that, isn't it? But you know what? Carlo Ancelotti's Everton, but not look bad this season. Well, somewhere along the line you would guess you're gonna have to beat Manchester City if you want to win the FA Cup. Simple as that. So whilst I wouldn't suggest for one second that I was over ecstatic when ball seven came out after us. <laughs> Uh, no, I'd be lying to say that. And we've got the hardest uh, tie out of the lot. Yeah. But definitely. the good news is it's here at Goodison Park. The players are obviously comfortable playing at Goodison Park. And we're going to have to be top of our game to get a result. But who knows? It's a great opportunity for us. Yeah, well, we've got a month to prepare for that. Of course, we play them next week in the Premier League yeah. here at Goodison. But tonight it's Fulham. And we're just seeing a few of the players arriving here. Um, the big question I've got for you is it looks like we're going to be missing Dominic Calvert-Lewin tonight. Yeah, uh, he picked up an injury against Tottenham. Um, that man, Richarlison, do you expect him to lead the line tonight? Do you know what? I think Joshua King might play. Um, okay. You know, that's got to be the reason. As long as he's up to speed, as long as Carlo thinks he's, he's, he's ready to lead the line in terms of his fitness levels and what have you, it wouldn't surprise me if, if Joshua played because that's the reason we signed him. Because mm. if anything happens to Dominic, we needed another natural centre forward. Richarlison can play up there. Of course they can. I mean, Gilfie did great up there. You know, alongside him for the last half hour or so the, the other night when Dominic went off. But in an ideal world, you want players who know their jobs inside out, and mm. Josh knows that. Yeah, and uh, the other question was, who's going to play out wide if, if, if Richarlison or, or King plays through the middle? Because we all of a sudden we have so many wide options who are in great form. We saw Bernard score, yeah. Wobie's had a great season, and of course Rodriguez is available too. You know, yeah. there's so many well, options. That, that, you know, that's that's the problem now. Carlo has he's you know he's got a you know a, a full house in terms of quality players. To, to pick from and, and that's got to be good it's got to be really good for him bit a problem for him but a, a good problem to have mm. um, and it means you can rotate the side as well and make sure that there's enough fresh legs in the, in on, on the pitch tonight we have had four days to recover so that should be all right should mm. be plenty for us but it wouldn't surprise me if he just tweaks it a little bit maybe, yeah. maybe brings in one or two well we beat these earlier on in the season down at Craven Cottage and I don't know if you can remember, but it was a real game of two halves where we were 3-0 up and then yeah. second half, all of a sudden, Everton kind of panicked a little bit and it was the first time we've really seen any of Ancelotti's sides have a little bit of a wobble. Do you think that might be in their mindset a little bit today? Oh, I don't think it will be in their mindset tonight. I think, you know, we, we sort of fell over the line in that game a little bit, didn't we? Mm. Didn't we? After such a encouraging first half and Fulham were dreadful at the back in, in that first half as well, I think it was a pr pretty much a turning point for Fulham more than it was for us. We hung on for the three points and you know, obviously, we've we've gone on to do far better than Fulham, as you would expect. Mm. But Fulham, since that game, have probably the, the penny maybe dropped a little bit with them. And thought, look, we can't we can't defend like this anymore. We've got to tighten up and we've got to become more compact. Mm. And and you know, without taking anything away from them in in, in forward areas. So, you know, it, it was more a turning point for them than us, I think, that game. Yeah. So that they're, they're actually ten points off safety. Yeah. But. You can't be thinking that, can you, coming into tonight's game? If you're on the pitch tonight, you've got to think, right, we need to be on our absolute game here to make sure we get over the line with three points. 100%. I mean, you know, it's we've got games in hand, but you've got to use those games in hand. You've got to make mm. sure you pick up the points in those games in hand. We obviously know that one of those games is, is here against Manchester City, which goes without saying is going to be a tough game. We followed it up with a trip across the road, um, the, you know, a few days later. So... <laughs> They're tough games, a couple of tough games after tonight. So look, let's just not get ahead of ourselves. Let's get tonight done. Mm. Um, go at them hard early on, first 10 or 15 minutes of the game. Get out the traps early. Put the pressure on them because they're down in the bottom three because they struggle at certain, in certain areas. So let's not disappoint our fans watching the game. Let's mm. get ourselves out there and try. But you've got to remember it's Fulham's game in hand as well. You know, they oh, yeah. sat 10 points clear, so they're looking at it in exactly the same way we've got to win this game to close the gap to seven points and that gives you a little bit of a sniff mm. 10 points and you're thinking you know you're, you're really behind the eight ball a little bit there yeah um i think we just got some footage of tom davis i think that might be tom davis it's kind of hard to tell with his face yeah his I, saw, I, saw, I saw tom before mm. uh, you know as i was walking coming into the ground i saw tom and managed to get, have a couple of words for him said to him you're playing really well keep mm. it going and he and he that's probably the best performance i've seen him producing an everton shirt yeah 
Uh, match of the day, gave him man of the match. Yeah, he, he, was, he, was, he was exceptional. Um, you know, and again, I spoke to Sarah about it, you know, a couple of weeks ago, saying that, you know, he, he does the ugly stuff. He has to do horrible stuff that no one really wants to give you any credit for. So he's had to do that, but he can be more than that as well. Do that job, but you can, you can do more when you're on the ball. Use the ball better. You know, get yourself forward. You know, you've got all the energy in the world. You're a young kid. Get yourself up and down the pitch. So mm. don't just, you know, pigeonhole yourself as a somebody who has to break up play. Go and express yourself once you've got the ball as well and add, add more to your game. Yeah, and this is ideally, you know, the perfect team for him to come up against because overall you'd like to think Everton have got more quality. So maybe it's an opportunity for Tom to show that, you know, playmaking kind of capability well, has in his it. back pocket. I mean, to- Tom's, a, it, Tom's still a relatively young boy. But he's got over 100-odd 100, 100 appearances for the football club. Captain the club as well. Captain the club. So you, you can't just be the young kid on the block anymore. You've, you're in the side now. Mm. You've, you've got over 100 appearances for a fantastic football club. Kick on. This is your next stage now. Kick on and become a player that is first on Carlo's team sheet. You know, be, be a player that everyone goes, oh, yeah, brilliant. With Tom Davis is playing. He'll boss the midfield. You know, t- take games over. That's what yeah. he's got to try to do. Yeah, well, one man who, who seemed to control the whole midfield um, against Tottenham was Decore. He just covers every blade of grass as well. I think he scored his first goal for the club against Fulham, actually. Um, he's going to be integral again today, isn't he? Yeah, again, I mean, that, that's that's what, why we bought him, because, you know, his energy levels are fantastic. He's got great physique. You know, he, he's one of them players who you expect to get stronger as the game goes on. And, he, he you know, it was notable, again, that Tom and Decore were excellent in the, in, in the last half an hour of the, that game in the extra mm. time. And they just got stronger and stronger because they're fit boys. So, again, still somebody I think there's more to come from him. I think we can get more out of him on the ball. I think he can go get forward and run beyond the, the front three and get go- more goals for us as well. So that's that's the exciting thing for us. There's players that are doing well, but there's m- more, f- you know, I, I feel we can get more from them as well. Mm. Um, just to, to wrap up talking about the rest of the midfield who played in the Spurs game. Sarah's going to talk a little bit more about him later on, but Gilfie Sigurdsson, yeah. a goal and three assists, yeah. you know, arguably is his best game for Everton since yeah. joining from Swansea. No, Gilfie was excellent. He really was. And su- sublime touches for the goals. Just delicate passes mm. and, you know, the, the weight of the pass, the timing of it, everything was was perfect for his three assists. Mm. Confidently taken penalty as well. I'm, I'm not so sure. I'm, I'm, I'm not a big <laughs> fan of this staring at the goalkeeper one. No. But, you know, Gilfie does it very, very well. And that, that's a sign of confidence. So... You know, he, he, he's doing well for himself and all, all of a sudden we're starting to talk in real positive ways about a lot of our players at the moment. You know, Richie comes back and scores two goals as well. That's important for us. Mm. You know, him, him coming back and scoring his goals and feeling a little bit more confident about himself as well. So, all, all in all, I think Carlo will be really, really pleased, not only with the result against Tottenham, but the manner in which we did it and the performance levels of a lot of the players. Yeah, well, he certainly seemed pretty calm, didn't he, Carlo Ancelotti, have not cup of tea when the ninth (laughs) goal of the game went in Um, I'm sure he won't be as calm tonight against Fulham Um, if there was to be one concern for me out of that game was that Everton didn't name a full bench for the cup match Um, is that maybe a little bit of a concern for Ancelotti that his squad's not as deep as maybe the other teams competing for European places Um, I mean he, he won't use it as an excuse I mean, there's plenty of other managers not so far away that make plenty of excuses, but Carlo's not that kind of guy. You know, he, you know, you, you play the cards you dealt with. It's as simple as that. Um, but we keep our mouths shut and we get on with it, and we go out and try and win football matches with the personnel that we've got available to us. That's all you can do. You can stick some young kids on there. Perhaps Carlo could have done that on Wednesday mm. night, but he probably felt he didn't need all of them on there. So you can fill your bench up. That won't be a problem. But you've got to make sure down the line we've got the quality that's there because you saw with the likes of Bernard coming on, they can be so important to your bench for you, yeah. especially as the season progresses. Yeah, I mean, talk about that quality. Holgate came on as well. Coleman came on. They've been regular this season. But Coleman came on and just, he offers so much energy, doesn't he? We're going to well, get the team news in a minute, but just a quick word yeah. on Coleman. Well, I, I just thought Seamus's attitude, it, it wasn't even his performance. It was just his attitude. It was a, come on, listen, I want to get to the cup final. Mm. I'm Seamus Coleman. I'm the captain of Everton Football Club, and, I, and, you, and I'm going to show everybody who's watching this game that m- I'm the captain of this club, and I'm going to drive us forward. So it, it, it was a brilliant, brilliant performance, and it makes everybody else tick along and play as well. Yeah, it was a great substitute appearance from uh, Seamus Coleman. We'll find out in just a second whether he's going to be a substitute again, as uh, the team uses in for Everton versus Fulham in the Premier League kickoff is not far away now in goal continuing is Robin Olsen putting a real good display in that win over Spurs Mason Holgate gets a start today back in the starting 11 Richarlison find out if he's leading the line 
shortly. Gilfie Sigurdsson, how could you drop him after that form? And that performance in midweek, Luca Dean continues on the left side. One of the most reliable left foots in the game. Abdullah de Corey, you can't leave him out, brings too much to this uh, the side. James Rodriguez back in the side as well after being dropped against Tottenham. Andre Gomez also back in today. Uh, ben Godfrey in place as well. And Seamus Coleman does get a start today once more. And Tom Davis continues in midfield also. So that must have been him with the face mask on and the uh, huge jacket. And there's a the substitute bench as well. The first thing that jumps out to me is that Alan is back in the squad, which will uh, really bring some uh, joy to Carlo Ancelotti. Um, but another thing you could probably mention from that is that on the bench right there, the second one down, Michael Keane. He's been dropped. Yeah. So it looks like Holgate and Godfrey are going to be the centre-back partnership tonight. Yeah, I, I, it, it depends, doesn't it? I mean, I think, it, I mean, we've got Seamus, haven't we? So I'm, mm. maybe Seamus plays right back, Luca Dean left back, yeah, and Mason I, and Godfrey. And, Hol and Holgate and Godfrey in the middle is how yeah. I'd see it. You would guess so, wouldn't you? Mm. Mason and, you know, young young centre-back centre partnership, isn't it? Um, it certainly is. But... No surprise that Carlo's mixed it up a little bit there. Mm. Uh, you know, a few, few fresh legs coming in as well. He obviously clearly feels it's a game where he's comfortable to do that. And, you know, who can argue with him? You know, mm. at the end of the day, we all know that Michael Keane, if you're playing in an FA Cup final out here tomorrow morning, Michael Keane plays. Let's mm. be clear about that because, uh, you know, Michael's been excellent. So it's, uh, it's not anybody being dropped, that mm. squad rotation, rotation for me. Yeah, and, and tonight you could argue argue that Holgate is probably our best ball-playing defender. So do you think Ancelotti is anticipating us having a lot of the ball tonight? Well, you'd like to think so, yeah. I mean, I think just by looking at the side, he's, you know, he's, he's comfortable to bring Andre back in. You know, he's, he's, he's quite happy to leave the boys at the back. I mean, it's a very, very inexperienced pairing. It's a new pairing, really, in, in Mason and, and Ben yeah. playing together. So, look... We should dominate possession, it's as simple as that, and we should win this game of football. Mm. But we've got to go out and do it. It's all well, well and good talking about it, and that'll be the message. There can't be any, ex any excuses about being tired because he's freshened it up as well. So, mm. you know, the message is there. If you, if, if you think you should be in the side, here's your opportunity. Go and show me you're ready to start on a regular basis. Always, It's always the same thing. He did. The rotation of the squad is very, very important, especially on this kind of season as well. It's been, it's been a crazy season, but... You know, we we seem to be handling it quite well. Yeah, I mean, the only concern in my mind is that last time we played at home in the league, we played Newcastle, and and we lost that day. Yeah. Um, and you know, we were probably going to control that game. Like beforehand, we thought we were going to be on top for most of it, and yeah. that didn't happen. How do we avoid the mistakes tonight that we made in that game? You learn from the Newcastle game, and you use it as a as a tool to push you on and say, listen, we don't want to have that feeling. We don't want to give up that opportunity again. It's happened twice for me. Great opportunity against West Ham a few a few weeks back, and we, we messed up on that one. Great opportunity to kick on against Newcastle. We messed that one up as well. Mm -hmm. Let's not make it a hat trick here this evening. Let's let's get out. And as I said earlier on, get get out the traps early. Let Fulham realise they're they're here at Goodison Park against a really good side. Go out and make life difficult for them, mm -hmm. and make our life far more easier by getting an early goal and calming everybody down, putting Fulham on the back foot. That's got to be important because we. We're on such a good play position. You know, the lads have put us, uh, this football club, in a great position to push on. Don't give it up. These are moments you have to seize. You, mm. you can't just say, oh, you know, bad day at the office. Don't want to hear any of that. Seize the moment and push mm. on. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of players who you'd like to think could influence the game today. I mean, the front three today is probably going to be Rodriguez, Richarlison and Sigurdsson going off that lineup. That's... Plenty of firepower, surely, to, to get beyond this full of Oh, defense. it should be. I mean, James, we all know the, the quality that James, you know, has, has in his locker. So you'd like to think that he'll be instrumental in creating chances for us. Obviously, Richie's going to change his role slightly and play up top. Um, Joshua King's on the bench, if need be. Obviously, that, that would suggest to me that Carlo doesn't qu quite think he's up to speed mm. to start the game. Um, but no surprise if he does come on at some point in the, in the evening. And we know Gilfie's in good form as well. So... The big thing for me is every one of those players on the pitch tonight should be full of confidence. Yeah, brilliant. Well, cheers, Graham. Uh, remember, if you want to get some questions into Graham, Sarah will ask him later on. Get onto Twitter, hashtag Everton Live, and get your questions over there. Right, so we've been talking about it all, of Ever all throughout Everton Live so far. If you've not seen the highlights yet, here's the best of the 5 4 against Tottenham from midweek. Well, after Saturday night's a stirring comeback at Manchester United, it's midweek FA Cup football for Everton. In it comes from Son, and there's the flick on, and it's in from Davinson Sanchez. 
an early goal for Spurs. Everton pick up again here. Dominic Calvert-Lewin, it's there! Dominic Calvert-Lewin with the equaliser for Everton. That is his 50th goal in an Everton jersey. Richarlison, can he get a shot away? He certainly can! What a goal! Calvert-Lewin teeing up Richarlison, and the Brazilian did the rest. Ziggerton now trying to bring that down ball under control, and he did it very well indeed. And then Calvert-Lewin's gone down in the box, and Everton have a penalty. Ziggerton, can he get the better of Lloris? He certainly can, with some comfort. Eric Lamella for Spurs, Son. Ooh, it's got through to Lamella, and Lamella has scored. And there's the corner, and a brilliant save initially from Olsen, but turned home by Tottenham. Sigurdsson. Now Richarlison, he's found space inside the penalty area, what a finish! Oh, that's brilliant from Richarlison! A superb take, and an instant finish with the left foot to get the better of Hugo Lloris. Here's Son. And that's the equaliser from Harry Kane. Bernard for Ziggerton. No space to get a shot away, but he's turned it back for Bernard. And Bernard has scored! Oh, wonderfully worked by Ziggerton for Bernard. And how about that? It's finished. Everton 5, Tottenham 4. Absolutely fantastic stuff there. Everton five, Spurs four after extra time. Proper cup time. We just shared a giggle then, didn't we, Graham? Yeah. Looking at Carlo, cool as you like, blowing, blowing to cool it down his coffee or his tea, whichever it was. It was class, wasn't it? It was absolutely brilliant. I mean, you, you see Duncan. Dun Duncan's the polar opposite. You know, <laughs> yeah. the excitable young player still in there somewhere, isn't it? And like, you know, swinging ball boys over his head when he was manager <laughs> and everything like that. And then you just got Carlo, just blowing his cup of tea. Cool. Seen it, done it, not a problem. Seen it a million times, don't worry. Oh. Inside his heart's going like that, though, trust me. Yeah, I can imagine so, but I've got to admit, even seeing his reaction to that, I felt a little bit calmer, yeah. to be honest. But I wasn't doing that. I was absolutely bouncing around my living room when Bernard slid that what, in. Sarah, it, it would be so good, and we've all said it, and we've said it so many times. Can you imagine if this place had been full up? And oh, the, I know. The, the atmosphere would have been incredible. You know, just the, the, the people's faces to get that to go 5-4 up. The, place, the roof would have come off. Well, it's such a shame. It is. It's, it's devastating that this place wasn't packed out with Evertonians because, as you rightly said, you know, I think it is already a classic FA Cup game. You know, five four, yeah. so back and forth, up and down. But you know, it it thoroughly deserved supporters, didn't it? Oh, it did. It certainly did. I mean, it, that'll be shown for years and years and years. The good thing about it is, with the, with the amount of times they show it on television over the years, we'd always remember that we won it, and yeah. we'd always watch and see us win, other than you know, rather than lose it. So, it was a brilliant game of football. Um, the neutrals would have absolutely loved it. We loved it in the end. Yeah. Um, but get your head back in for this one now. That's that's the most important thing. D done and dusted. You got a little break FA Cup wise, yeah. and in between we got some really really important Premier League games to play because we put ourselves in a fantastic position to push on. We really have, and of course, you know, Fulham, that's where our focus is for tonight. But also, Manchester City in just a few days' time, they are of yeah. course our quarter-final opponents. Yeah, they are an absolutely exceptional side, yeah. and it's not who you want. But would you rather play them here at Goodison than perhaps at Wembley? You're going to have oh, to beat well, the best. Yeah, yeah, 100%. You've got to beat the best if you're going to if you're going to win the FA Cup. But no doubt about it, you want to play them on your home turf. And here at Goodison, where everybody feels comfortable, gives you a better opportunity to beat them. It's a tough, tough game. You know, the, obviously the FA Cup game is going to be, a, you know, a, a different kettle of fish. But the Premier League game on Wednesday night is a, is an incredibly difficult game of football there's no point in trying to dress it up this one's the most important one because we need to get three points if we get three points out of this we give ourselves that little bit of cushion we keep in touch with the, the teams above us so that if we were to get turned over by City on Wednesday night it's not disastrous yeah. we want to win it of course if we took a point if you gave me a point three points here and a point Wednesday I'd take it off you right now yeah. but the most important thing is to get your head on ready for this one tonight 
no denying that City is a really, really tough game. Definitely. So we've got that to come in a few days, but for now it is Everton versus Fulham. And some people who will be watching very closely across the pond is this week's Supporters Club of the Match, and it's the Austin Evertonians. Hi from Austin, Texas. My name is Neil and we are the Austin Evertonians. Our club was founded in 2014 from a social media group, which currently has 138 members. We meet up to watch games as early as 6 in the morning and currently have a Discord page where we can chat during the matches. A few Austin Evertonians have been to a match at Goodison. Personally, I've only been to one so far, and that was the match against Middlesbrough in September 2016. We won that match 3-1. to one. I hope to visit again soon before making the move to Bramley Moor. Until then, up the toffees and let's beat Fulham. For the Derby, we've had as many as 50 Austin Evertonians meet up at Haymaker, our local pub. This Sunday, we'll be cheering on the Toffees from what will be snowy Austin, Texas on Valentine's Day at 1 p.m. I would have to say that my favorite Everton player ever would be the blue kangaroo, Tim Cahill. I think that Tim just epitomizes everything that Everton's about. He has that fight in him. And I don't care what anybody says, there's a place in any team in the world for a player like Tim Cahill. In 2019, we had the pleasure of hosting Tim Howard and Everton FC at Austin Fan Fest. We watched an Everton match together, had barbecue, and Everton in the USA presented a meet and greet with Tim Howard and Darren Griffiths. Where we were surprised with a barbecue lunch with Tim Howard. Um, he even brought out our food and service, and then we sat down and had lunch with them and got to uh, share stories. It was really cool. This guy has now become an even bigger fan, and um, I think after the, the fan fest, uh, where he got a chance to be on TV and on the stage with Rebecca Lowe and Kyle Martino and Robbie Earl, um, it was, it was a, a special family moment for us. Local supporters can reach us via Facebook, Twitter, and through email. And it's Everton. 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 Everton who recently said that he played for the biggest club in the world in Manchester United, but he played for the greatest club in the world in Everton Football Club. Accurate? Well, certainly about the latter part anyway. 100% accurate, yeah. I mean, you know, few can deny that Manchester United are possibly the biggest club in the world, but we are the greatest, there's no we doubt are. about that. So, true, true quote from Tim, doing a great role out there in the States as an ambassador for us. Definitely. A lot of love for Tim Howard there. But back to today's game and to the manager of the opposition, Scott Parker, someone you know very well. You played alongside him, didn't you, Graham? I did, yeah. I mean, when I, when I was at Charlton, Scott was a youngster coming through. Clearly, you could see he was a very, very talented footballer. But unsurprisingly, or you would be stunned to know that he didn't really fancy tackling people well. back in the day. <laughs> And then he went on. He went on loan to Norwich for three months. I think it was three or six months, and he came back like a caged tiger. He was unbelievable. The transformation in him come, going from Charlton as a youngster to going and really realising what football's all about in in the Division One or was it was it Championship in those years, yeah. whatever it was. And uh, coming back, he never looked back then, and he was absolutely pivotal to everything that we we did at Charlton Football Club in the in the middle of midfield there sensational player so much energy so much desire used to just he'd kick his granny scott parker <laughs> I love that. He, was, he was that kind of kid he really was and he didn't care you know we had some we had people like paolo di canio training with us and playing for us at a period of time tough scott used to go crashing through paolo he didn't care wow. who you were and every credit to him he went on and had a really good career and he's doing a lovely little job at fulham as well under very difficult circumstances he's, he certainly is and you're quite right in everything you say about scott parker a fantastic player i think he was linked with everton a few times and i always quite quite yeah. wanted to see him play in that royal blue but he went to a different blue evertonians team, evertonians guaranteed would have loved scott parker 100 yeah, percent pro proper footballer isn't he yeah um, but as you say you know he's, he's doing a good job you referenced it there it's a difficult situation Fulham, newly promoted, you know, they're, they're, they're finding, an, they're a little way off safety now, aren't they? It's yeah. about 10 points, so yeah. 
But the, the branding of football they play, and I ref referenced it earlier uh, when I was talking with Rich, the away game at Craven Cottage, and you were there, the second half, they played some lovely stuff and gave us a really tough game. Yeah, I mean, they? in the end, I mean, to be totally honest with you, sometimes when you're two, three nil down, it's easier to play then because, you know, for all intents and purposes, the game's supposedly gone. Mm -hmm. So you go out and you relax and, you, 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 you know, the shackles are off, as it were. So... They went out and expressed themselves and got themselves back and gave us a right scare in the end. And, yeah. you know, eventually we fell over the line. So, you know, missed penalty along the way as well. So, as I said to Richard before, you know, that, I think that was a big bit of a turning point for them more than it was for us in, in, in our season. You know, they, they really realised that, one, they could cause Premier, Premier League side defences problems going forward. And they had to tighten up at the back because the amount of chances we had in that first half was outrageous. And you don't stay in the Premier League defending like that. So it's been a learning curve for them. Clearly, they haven't got enough quality to, you know, to push up to the, you know, the half of the table where they'd like to be. They don't want to get to be in the yo-yo club. That's the one thing for them. So hopefully Scott has got an understanding board and a chairman and they'll be patient with him and be patient with the players because he's clearly trying to build something at Fulham. But it's not going to happen in your first season. It doesn't necessarily happen overnight. Sheffield United did it last year, had an unbelievable season. And look at what's unfortunately happened to Chris Wilder and his side. So, you know, it's it's you can't take you can't take your foot off the pedal at any moment because it can all come tumbling down, especially in the Premier League. It's a brutal place to be sometimes. It is the Premier League is a brutal place, but somebody who's done very well and just notched up 300 Premier League appearances is our Icelandic man who slotted home so coolly in the week. It's Gilfie Sigurdsson. I'm very proud. When I was young, uh, the dream was always to play in the, in the Premier League. Never, never thought I'd get maybe a hundred, hundred goals in English football. But uh, I think the next target will be 100, 100 goals in the Premier League. I moved to England when I was 15, so that was always the dream to um, to play in the Premier League. Um, I made I jumped over to the Bundesliga first, uh, and then then I got my chance in the in the Premier League. So that was always my dream to to play in the Premier League, and, and I've been lucky enough to do it for now for nine years or so. So it's been it's been a wonderful time. It feels like ages ago though, uh, my first game. Playing with men at such a young age is, is very important. Um, at the time for me, reserve football was, I wouldn't say useless, but it wasn't going to get me anywhere. So I was, I was quite happy to go out both to League 2 and League 1 and, and experience uh, proper football. football. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd say to young players, go and play football. That's the most important thing. There's no point hanging around for years and, and wasting season after a season, just, just training and, and playing and maybe reserve for all 23 football. Yeah, I remember we were on a Christmas break um, in Germany, so I remember when I spoke to Brandon um, and he basically asked me to, if I wanted to come on loan and I think a few days later I was, I was on the plane flying over to, to Swansea and um, as you said, things happened really quickly, so I was playing in the Premier League uh, probably a week after I, I spoken to him. Really good couple of years. Um, time that I really enjoyed. Um, obviously a big club and at such a young age, it was uh, tough, uh, tough to get probably the amount of playing time that I wanted at the time, even though I played quite a few games. Um, but time I really enjoyed and, and helped me develop both as a person and, and as a player. The manager, uh, the club, um, I'd known of interest from the, from the manager uh, for a long time, so it, it did take a long time for the transfer actually to go through. Um, but yeah, I just felt it was the, for the right, right step for me at the time. Uh, Go to a big club with fantastic history um, and to be playing in a team that's fighting for the position, position we're in now. He's a very good good manager, a very good coach, um, man to man. He's, he's fantastic dealing with different kind of situations. Um, he's very calm, um, probably because he's seen it, seen it all before and he, he knows exactly what to do. Um, but he, I mean, he didn't. He, 
didn't make 10, 20 changes to things in and around the training ground or something when he came in. He kind of just came in, um, did the same things we were doing before, but obviously added what he's been doing um, in the past. Uh, and you can see this kind of the shape work we do prior to every game is, is very important for us. And uh, I think everyone here agrees he's a, he's a fantastic manager. Well, over 300 appearances for Gilfie Sigurdsson in the Premier League. He's making another one tonight against Fulham. Um, but we were just talking then, Graham. He seems to play better for Everton when he's further forward. He played a lot of games just in midfield, generally, didn't he? Yeah. But now he's playing an attacking role. He just, you know, blossoms. I, I think if you ask Gilfie where he'd want to play, it's further on, further up, further up the pitch, where he feels he can be more effective. I mean, let's be totally honest with you. Gilfie, he'll work his socks off, no doubt about it, but he's, he's not a dynamic runner, is he? No. So what you, what you need is you, you two boys in the middle of the park who can who are his legs in some respects and get a, keep him you know get him around and then get him the ball get him the ball as early as you can in those areas and then it's up to Gilfy to pick out the lovely little passes that he picks out against Tottenham the other night because mm. he's got the quality to do that he's got the he's got the capability to shoot from distance as well you know so he's he, he's he's been very very good over the last few weeks Gilfy Sigurdsson and I think a lot of that is down to the fact that where he's playing at the moment. Mm. Well, one man who likes to do little intricate passes is James Rodriguez. Didn't play against yeah. Tottenham, but against this Fulham defence, who you know aren't the most established Premier League defence, it could be the perfect game for him, really, couldn't it? Yeah, I mean, you would imagine, um, as we said earlier on, we should boss possession in this game, no doubt about it. So you get the ball to the Gilfies of this world and James Rodriguez, and you would like to think they're going to deliver in mm -hmm. terms of opening up defences, you know, creating chances for us. You know, they, they, the, the, the pair of them possess the knack of delivering the ball at the right time. And I always, I always talk about it because it's such an important thing. It's got to, the ball's got to be played at the right time. It's got to be played at the right pace, you know, in the right area. You've got to, you've got to coincide it with the run of the forward and stuff like that. And the pair of them are excellent at it mm. because it looks easy to do, but it's very, very hard to do. And there's not a huge amount of players that are excellent at it, but Hammers is 100% one of them. Yeah, and he is starting, and he does like playing at Goodison Park, so hopefully we'll see him deliver tonight. Uh, cheers, Graham. Remember, questions in for Graham. Hashtag Everton Live is what you want to use over on Twitter. Uh, before we get into that, though, let's take a look at, uh, at how we got on against Fulham when we played them earlier on in the season. Well, with the final international break done and dusted until March of next year, there's an awful lot of Premier League football to cram in between now and then. And for Everton, that starts here at Craven Cottage. Aina, the Nigerian defender, and here's Richarlison picking up for Everton. Back from suspension and back creating a goal for Everton. 40 seconds on the clock, Dominic Calvert-Lewin, created by Richarlison. He is back all right, and Dominic Calvert-Lewin has another goal for Everton. And he has it again into the Cordova Reed, and that's the goal for Fulham. A well-worked goal as well. Everton just slowing it down. Now out wide for Iwobi, who goes past two. It's a great run by Iwobi. He's found Hammers Rodriguez in turn for Luca Dean. And that's for Calvert-Lewin, and that's a brilliant Everton goal. Superb football, and you know who is on the end of it again. determined to win that and did. Decore's touch for James Rodriguez, sent out wide for Luca Dean. There's the cross in and there's the goal for Everton. And it's Decore who gets it. His first for Everton. And it's another wonderful, wonderful Everton goal. Now Ruben Loftus cheek thought about the strike of goal, goes for the return, gets it and gets a penalty. And he's missed it. Cavalero slips and skies it over the crossbar. Lookman's cut back, Ruben Loftus cheek, and this time they are back in it. Fulham two, Everton three. 
well. Okay, a great three points on the banks of the Thames there earlier on in the year. Hopefully we can get another three against Fulham uh, this evening. Um, let's talk about Fulham for a moment. We just saw him score uh, there against us at Craven Cottage. Ruben Loftus-Cheek, he's starting tonight. Um, he's one of their standout players for you, isn't he? I've always liked Loftus Cheek. I think he's a really good specimen. The size of him. He's such a tall lad, strong, technically very, very good for a, for a tall player as well. Just seems to have lost his way a little bit at Chelsea, didn't he? I mean, he's, he's he had a bad injury. I think he did his Achilles, mm. and he's he wasn't quite the same player from when he came back from there. Obviously, Chelsea feel it would be beneficial to them and to Fulham for him to come out on loan, and and he and he's done okay. He's got you know he hasn't played every single week for Fulham. You know, since the start of, of going there, but certainly over the last few weeks, he's been more inf influential in the way they play. But if he gets himself up to top speed again, he, he's a player. Yeah, well, he was in and around the England team, wasn't he? Yeah. You know, with the yeah. Euros coming up and that, you'd like to think maybe he could he could step up. Um, but speaking of players who didn't quite find their feet, um, Adam O'Luckman didn't quite find yeah. his feet. At Everton, we saw glimpses of his brilliance every now and then, but again, full of an opportunity for him to rebuild his career, really. Yeah, I mean, I feel bad for. Adam Ola, because I liked him. I, I thought he was a good player. I really liked him. I think I think he was an exciting young player, and for whatever reason, I don't know he, whether he couldn't settle properly. Or, you know, his face didn't fit at the time. So or a lot what? of players in front of him as know, well. Yeah. Wasn't I mean, it, look, he, perhaps he needed to be a bit more patient. I don't know. But some, when you're young, all you want to do is play football. And when you're, he's a London boy. So when you're away and you're not playing and you feel like you should be playing and things don't fall into place, then it's very, very easy to, to get down about things. And he's now back in, in London. He obviously feels comfortable. Scott Parker's playing him week in, week out, and he's doing really, really well. I, but he's definitely a player. There's no doubt about it. I, I, I like him. And I, I really wish we, he would have stayed here and we, we could have seen him flourish, because I think he would have. Yeah. Is that something that you think gets kind of overlooked a little bit in the world of football, that... No matter where a player goes and, and plays, they should be just as good as where they are. But yeah. they're human at the end of the day, and you know you've got to oh, take into uh, account those home diff comforts. Different, different people, different characters. You know, some people are, are you know a bit more battle hardened than others. You know, it's it's, it's difficult. I remember when I first came up from London, it took me at least three or four months to really settle down and find my feet. And yeah, of mm. course, I was homesick. But you know, it was a little bit different. You know, these days, you know, you've got player liaison officers and coming out of left right and center and yeah. you've got people picking you up outside your front door and driving you to the training ground when you're not really I, I, I was wet behind the ears there's the training ground off you go find it you know so it's a you know it was a little bit more you know suck it and see kind of thing when I was playing nowadays it's easier to settle I think but for whatever reason it didn't work out for Adam Ola and I feel bad for him and bad for us because I think he could have been a good player for us. Yeah, well, fingers crossed it doesn't work out for him again tonight. Uh, kickoff is just over half an hour away. Uh, if you've been paying attention to the women's game, you'll have seen uh, in the Reading results uh, earlier on uh, this week that Gabby George is back in the side and we caught up with her about returning from injury. It was an unbelievable feeling, obviously, being out for so long. It feels like a, a day that's never going to come, but it finally come for me and um, it was great to be involved with the girls and in the match day squad. I know, it's, it was close to a year, wasn't it, that you, you've been out. So it's a long process for, for your rehabilitation. Yeah, I think um, obviously no one thought it was going to be that long, but with a global pandemic, you can never put a time limit on anything. Um, so I think to get back within the 12 months, I think me and the staff have done un unbelievably well, to be honest. Um, obviously having the operation postponed and pushed back, we thought it might have took a bit longer on the other side, but I think obviously having the operation postponed wasn't the worst thing that happened to me. I think on the other side, it's made it easier for me and the staff, and um, we've done it in a, a great time, to be fair. I've worked closely over the last 12 months with Charlotte, Jack and Connor. I think I've had contact with them near enough every day. They were ringing me every day to make sure that I was all right. Um, and they've kept me going, really. Um, they keep a smile on my face every day. Um, and they've worked as hard as I've worked. Um, obviously, people only see what I do and what I'm doing in the gym, but without their programme, without their support, I would have never made it back into the squad last week within 12 months after having our surgery postponed for three to four months. So I think the work that they've been doing has been outstanding behind the scenes. And, and I'm openly, I, I appreciate it. Um, the club have done a lot. I had Willie, Chris, every staff member ringing me where we was in the pandemic and making sure that I was all right, really. And I think that's helped me and kept me with a positive mindset. In the year that you've been out, quite a lot has changed because there's been quite a lot of new signings. You know, Jill Scott's back on loan as well. So have you seen that kind of sitting out the, 
the change at Everton? Yeah, I think there's been big changes. Um, I was saying, though, although I've been out for a year, I haven't actually missed that much football. It could have been worse um, because obviously there's a pandemic and then by the time the season started again, I've probably missed like half of a season, which with an ACL, you probably normally miss a full season. So I've been quite lucky in that regard. Um, So I've got to see firsthand all the hard work that has gone on between the signings and obviously... Um, the girls progressing on the field and now get to join in and see what the quality has changed and it's gone through the roof. Um, I think the quality that they've signed has made us miles better and we just need to keep pushing on and, and get back to where Everton used to be. Gabby George back for Everton and uh, Sarah, you're, uh, you're, you're in there basically, you're in with Everton <laughs> inside. Um, how delighted will they be to have Gabby back? Oh, just just so delighted. You know, not only is Gabby uh, an incredible player for us, but she's just such a big figure within the team as well, a uh, big personality. And, you know, it's been tough uh, for her to be out for it's been almost a year. And I think it's got to be said as well, just the attitude and the, and the positivity that she's kept through that time has been fantastic. So we're all just absolutely delighted to have her back with us. Yeah, because if, you know, she was fully fit and she'd be kicking on every weekend, she'd be first name on the team sheet, wouldn't she? Yeah, she would be, you know, she's she's brilliant. She's been captain of Everton before, you know, she's been with us for so many years. And as I said, such, such a such a big personality within that team. And uh, just to have her travelling with the team again and, and, and in the squad has been fantastic. And, you know, hopefully before too long, she'll be back out there um, as well. But, you know, the defence has been has been good this season as well, but I'm sure she'll uh, she'll be delighted to, to be back in that squad and looking to get back in there properly soon. Yeah, well, I think she might be a little bit disappointed with the result. 1-1 against Reading. Um what happened? <laughs> uh, do you know what? Reading are, a, that Reading are a good side and they beat Manchester United last week so that was a big result and it just shows what they're capable of. Um, however, you know, we obviously really wanted it to be the three points today. We were frustrated to go behind uh, just before half-time about ten minutes. Oh! Fancy it! He absolutely loves it! What a strike by Louis Saha! Travis's delivery to the big there! Leads the counter attack. Here's Jelovic into the penalty area. Gets there ahead of Schwarzer. Now he needs some support. Jelovic going for goal anyway. How cheeky was that? Sigurdsson. How about that? Well, that's a good ball. In for Walcott. Walcott takes it to the far post. Cenk Tosin gets his first of the season. And oh, now, can it produce an Everton goal? Shoots it up here for Sigurdsson. It does produce an Everton goal. Some excellent goals in there to choose from, wasn't there? Yeah. A few from King Louis. King Louis, Big eh? Dunk, the main man as well. Yeah, that's right. James yeah, so. McFadden. Well, let's hope there's a few flying in those nets tonight. Yeah, absolutely. That's what we want. We want to hope to, to see some added to that tonight. Absolutely. Um, I, I don't want to ask you for the prediction, but I kind of do. because <laughs> I'm before, surprised you're going to allow me after my last one. Well, I was the same as you, though, Graham. I, I, I copied you a little bit on that one and went for a 1-0 Calvert-Lewin. He, he obviously got the goal, didn't he? Yeah. Um, but what, what are you going for for your prediction tonight? Yeah, I mean, tough one, isn't it? I mean, I would, I'm would. i going to probably go 3-1. Yeah? I'll go 3-1 and I it'll like probably that. be 0-0 or something stupid <laughs> like that. No, obviously, I'd, I'd, and it, look, as long as we get the three points, that's the main thing, but... I'm very, very sheepish tonight on predictions <laughs> after uh, saying one nil and only I was only eight goals out, wasn't this, I? But this is it. There we go. I was getting a few messages on Instagram myself saying you've had a howler there, girl. But I, I said, listen, as long as let's, we win, let's go three one. Yeah, I'll have three that. one. Yeah. I like that. You know, if we've got a two goal cushion in the last sort of twenty Correct. minutes, just a little bit better for your nerves, isn't it, and stuff like that? Absolutely. So. I want a nice, comfortable night tonight, not a heart ticker job. Yeah.
and, and it's a little bit warmer, not much, but it is a little bit little warmer. A little bit, yeah, so uh, warm us up with a performance, that'll do. Definitely. Well, we have got to that stage of the, of the show again where I've got the questions for you. Oh, here we go. I mean, yeah, I know. No excuses this? tonight on no, the... No excuses, look at on. that. Relatively effortless today, there wasn't it? There you go, look. See, <laughs> difference a few days makes, eh? Hey? <laughs> That's it, I've got my head on today, got me warm hands. So, Graham, questions for you. We have got Ryan Dickinson, who wants to know, penalty kick, power or placement? Both. Yeah. In an ideal world, both. Yeah. But the most important thing I'd say is placement because you know you can have all the power in the world. You've got to make sure you hit the target. So first and foremost, placement. But if you can put it power in it as well, all the better. Yeah, definitely. Penalty takers though, I think that Jags one at Wembley, but like Leighton Baines for me, his penalties are just David yeah. Unsworth. We've had loads of good penalty takers. Unzi was very good, wasn't yeah. he? Unzi was really good. Look, the reality of it is, it's it's keeping your nerve. Yeah. That's that's the way, you know you can you can practice it a million. People t they make me laugh when people talk about penalties. Oh, we practice penalties. We practice penalties. You can't practice. You can practice penalties, but you can't practice the feeling you get when there's pressure on it because that's totally different to standing on a training ground having a having a bit of a laugh and what have you. When the pressure's on, can you can you handle it or do you crumble? Definitely, and that's it. And like we said, Gilfie Sigurdsson earlier in the week showed his calmness and his coolness. Yeah. You know, we went through a phase where he struggled a little bit with the penalties, didn't he? But yeah. who would you have on penalties? Say we get another one tonight, it's Gilfie, isn't it? I'll take, yeah, Gilfie's got to keep taking the penalties. I'm, you know, I'm all for that. I mean, if somebody misses and they don't feel confident anymore, change it, fine. But Gilfie's doing a decent job so far. Just leave him alone and let him, don't even argue with him. Just leave the ball to him, let him get on with it. Let him do his thing. He's doing very yeah. well at those at the moment. Um, I like this question because it's always going to cause controversy, Graham. Blue Nose James wants to know, pineapple on a pizza, is this acceptable behaviour? Under no circumstances <laughs> is that acceptable, James. No, no, straight red card. <laughs> I'm not going to tell no. you that I'm, I'm, in, I'm inclined to a Hawaiian pizza now and then, then you're going to no, fall out of me. No. I mean, listen, each to their own, but not in my house. <laughs> not in not in Graham Stewart's house, love that. Um, I like this one, actually. Gladys Toffee wants to know, Graeme, did you ever, do you ever consider going into management? Is that something you'd like to do? Do you know what? I didn't, but I wish I had. Yeah. I wish I, 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 I wish somebody could have just said, right, bang, you're the manager without having to get all your coaching badges and go through all the rigmarole. It's, I didn't really fancy going all through doing courses, going up to Lillyshaw. I mean, I spent two years of, as a kid at Lillyshaw at the <laughs> school, school of excellence, as they called it. I'm not sure about the excellence <laughs> bit, but... I spent I spent two years there, and I think the thought that I'd have to go there again and for a for a week to do a oh. coaching certificate or whatever it was course put me off. So it reverts you get back to being a kid on a Sunday night, don't yeah. you? Thinking, ah, oh. just just fast track me to the manager's position. That'll do me. Definitely, I love that. Well, Graeme Stewart, future Everton manager. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love that. <laughs> just want to have a quick word with you. We, we mentioned him uh, before last game, and he came through with the goods for us. Tom Davis was man of the match. How, how impressed have you been with him? He's been fantastic. Yeah, over the last few weeks, he certainly picked his form up, Tom. He, he was very good against Manchester United. He was excellent. The best game I've seen him. I, I, I saw Tom just before I, just as I arrived at the ground and I had the chance to just have a couple of moments with him. And I just said to him, listen, you're playing really well. Keep going. Because I, I want him to keep going and I want all the players there to realise that you don't just have a few good games and then start, oh, you know, the people are saying nice things about me. Push yourself on all the time so important absolutely well I was going to ask you for a prediction but I've already got that we're going 3-1 so all that's left to say is thank you so much Diamond for your time as thank ever thank you it's my been pleasure a again pleasure. hopefully we'll all be smiling later but back to that man now and Tom Davis and he spoke to us ahead of kickoff Tom I'm sure a game four days after extra time isn't ideal but um, I, I imagine the the results and the performance that you put in in the last week counts a lot for confidence and momentum yeah definitely um as you said, it was a it was a long game and a tough one, but uh, we take confidence from it with with getting a win. So um, it's not ideal, but the the confidence is high, and that can that can motivate you sometimes more than your, your physical fitness and the mental side of it. You can get through the game. So um, we're all looking forward to get back out there. As you said, with the with the results going our way, so can't wait. And perhaps address the the, the home results, which have yeah. maybe suffered in the league of late. What have you been able to put that down to? Um, yeah. It's been an unusual season for everyone, I think. Um, obviously, not having the fans here, it's it's different, and um, yeah, it's just unusual. I think it's something that we want to correct, and we know we can get better playing at home and winning, and uh, we've got a chance to do that tonight. So we'll have to do it. Yeah. Fulham mounted a, a fight back in the, the game earlier in the season. They've been taking points off teams. Are they a team you you can't afford to underestimate today? Uh, definitely not. No, um, Premier League's 
it's always a difficult, difficult game, no matter who you're playing. Um, I think they've been unfortunate really with with the, the games that they've been playing in and they've been playing really well. Uh, they've got some good quality. Um, Luckman, obviously, that's played here. I know, I know how good he is, and um, the dangerous yet he set up well, and we've we've had a look at them. So we need to take this one like we have the United game, the Tottenham game, and bring that same energy and that same passion to the game. Um, probably defend as well as we have there, uh, and not take this one uh, lightly. Yeah, Tom Davis in the starting lineup again. Kick off just over a quarter of an hour away here at Goodison Park against Fulham. Well, Sarah, that means that the show sadly coming to an end once again. We're seeing each other quite a lot at the moment, aren't we? We are seeing each other. Like we said, it's a good job we get on, isn't it, Rich? And back again, is it in three three days' time? Oh, yeah, Manchester, for Manchester City. City. Uh, so yeah, I don't keep... think it's going to be much warmer either, to be honest. I know. Do you know what though? Like I always say every time. It might be cold, but it is just such a privilege to, oh. to be able to be in this beautiful stadium. Um, yeah. So, yeah, if the cold won't put us off, will it? It won't no. deter us. Absolutely not. And you know what? Fulham today, three points. That'll certainly warm us up. Oh, um, it will. What do you reckon? Early goal, put it to bed early on? Oh, that's you, you can't beat getting an early goal, can you? Can just, it takes a bit of pressure off. Mm. Um, the team can relax a bit and enjoy the football a little bit more. And as I said, you know, He's just seen Loftus Cheek there slot really coolly behind us. You know they've Don't got, say that. I know they've got some really good players in that team, and they're definitely capable of hurting us. But I think when you look at the quality that we've got throughout the side, the confidence that we should have gained, even though they'll be a little bit tired, of course, um, we've got to win this today. We've we've seen disappointing results at home where we give ourselves a chance to stay right in there and maybe have dropped points. So let's just make sure we get this over the line today. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, thanks for everything tonight, Sarah. Uh, we'll be back again for Manchester City tonight. It's Everton versus Fulham. We never lost to them in the Premier League. They're in the relegation zone. Ancelotti's never lost to them. Come on, Everton, surely. Anyway, the manager <laughs> is the man who will have the final say tonight. We'll see you for Manchester City next week. Carl, I imagine this has been a, a tough but rewarding week. How have you had to prepare for this game, given the two hours you played on Wednesday? Well, a lot of satisfaction for the game against Tottenham, but also strong effort. <clears throat> But we had time to recover, I think, properly. And uh, yeah, it's a different game, difficult game, because Fulham is used to play really well football. Um, we want to do the same tonight. Pay attention defensively, because they are, they, they are playing a good quality football. There are welcome returns for Gomez and Rodriguez. How tempted were you to start Josh King, given that Dominic Calvert-Lewin is out? Honestly, he trained well this week. It was uh, an option. I prefer uh, <coughs> to play, uh, to put players more uh, in midfield to have more control of the game with the possession. But King uh, is ready to play and be, can be an option the second half or uh, at the end of the game. You said Richarlison is, is back, a couple of goals in his, in his last game. Is it his responsibility tonight then to lead that line? Well, he has the responsibility like the others. I think we were pleased for the performance that he did against Tottenham because uh, uh, his moment was not so good. Uh, he had problems. Uh, he, he didn't have consistency in um, during the season. I hope this is the uh, right moment uh, for him to show consistency. You say Fulham have, been, Fulham have been playing well, taking points off teams. Where could they cause you problems tonight? No, they have, they have a good style of football. Uh, honestly, my personal point of view, they, they play well football. And, but they, you see also the teams at the bottom are fighting. And, uh, and today West Bromwich against United, uh, it was an unpredictable and unbelievable game. So we expect the same tonight.